It's awful loud up here. What? It's awful loud up here. Yeah, but I, I miss it. What's your name? Yuri. What is it? Yuri. Yuri. Okay. <laughs> viewers and today we're out here at 1770 Trotman Street and we're running into the Bull and Ram Gallery to see this exhibition the triumph of human painting and it's curated by the well-known painter Kathy Bradford hey Kathy hey. you gonna give us a little tour of the show I'd, I'd be glad to yeah. Um, there are eight artists in this show, one work each, and I wanted to kind of celebrate a time when painting with humanist impulses and intimacy and personal stories is um, very much in the air and of interest. You know, uh, that's all great, but you know, you're going to get a lot of flack from the uh the other species, you know, there's a kind of a special uh, chauvinism there, no. right? <laughs> Human painting doesn't mean that it, you de that it degrade was the painting of animals and no. monkeys and elephants. It doesn't and mean by humans. Oh, it means that the paintings themselves have a human element. Okay. And I didn't want to call, I didn't want to say figurative painting because that harks back to kind of an, an old school um, academic notion. Uh, so that's yeah. why I put the word human in. Okay. Not, not all the paintings have people in them. Here's one by Peter Gallo. Okay, we'll start out looking at this piece by Peter Gallo. And it's titled, Boyfriend in Rehab. And we've actually got some text there. It says. In eggshells, that's right, it says boyfriend in rehab. Okay, we've been a big fan of uh, Peter's work for a while. Um, there's also been a lot of talk recently about the idea of um, casual painting or crappy little painting or provisional painting. Um, does, does your theory about human painting sort of fit in with that somehow? Yes, I think it does. Because I think this kind of captures a certain amount of that kind of abject uh, qualities. Well, it's so personal, don't you think? I mean, I think for a long time to examine your soul was considered too bourgeois, especially in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, you had to be relevant and yeah. speak to political issues. Remember the show at the Brooklyn Museum in 2005? Do you remember that? Which one? <laughs> well, it was of Brooklyn, of Brooklyn painters. And we were all so excited about it. I wasn't in that show. So I wasn't it didn't, in that didn't show. exist for me. Yeah. Well, I walked around and I was so disappointed about that show because there was no painting like this. This was, this was too... Um, I remember writing my artist statement about the journey I was taking through my inner life, and I thought, oh, yeah. no, they're not going to go for that, and they didn't go for that. Well, I speaking of journey through your inner life, this is one of your pieces here. Yes, it is. And this sort of carries on with your theme of the swimmers. Yeah. So we've got kind of a, an empty lifeguard chair there. What is the title of this? This is called 
green lifesaver chair. And uh, what is this, about uh, 24 by yeah. 16, 18, something like that? Yes. Let's run over here and look at this piece. I, I wanted Catherine Bernhardt to be in the show. Catherine I Bernhardt. I think she's a real leader. Um, and I think a lot of people look to her because she manages to do portraits of women in this. And this is from 2005, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, with this great abandon. I mean, it's almost abstract. She just strokes the painting on. And, um, I think her approach to doing a portrait is very fresh. She, she and these are all done in acrylic? These and are all in acrylic. Some of the work is kind of uh, portraits of uh, fashion models or kind of an abstract version of fashion models, right? Hasn't she gotten quite a bit of play with the kind of the fashionista crew? She does. She, she takes these images from glossy magazines, literally. She's looking at an image when she takes them, when she paints her painting, as does this is Angela Dufresne. What's the name? Angela Dufresne. Angela Dufresne. And she was looking at a film. I was thinking this reminded me of The Seven Samurai or something like that. Yeah, it's a Japanese film still that she looks at when she takes this. But, but she's so good. She just puts down a bit of color and spells out this. Well, is there anything beyond the, uh, the subject matter that you think uh, implies humanist painting? Is there anything involved with maybe the, uh, the handling of the paint or maybe the approach to uh, picture making that also might have some kind of humanistic uh, content? Yes. Yeah. I think it's people who use paint, who believe in the emotive power of paint. The emotive power? Yes. Okay. I see you're smiling. Well, what's the title of this piece? Yeah. This is by Jordan Graw. And Jordan Graw? is Only When I Drink. I think it, it's about a, a group of people united in some secret yeah. ritual. And we've got some metallic paint there, so we've got some gold and silver paint as well. Kind of a... Uh, brusque handling of the oil. Let's take a look at the uh, videos that we've been hearing in the background. Ashley Wick is the youngest Ashley Wick. artist. This is one of your students, is that correct? She is. And she, yeah. um, she has made her paintings into videos, into stop motion animation, which was something that you and I couldn't have even thought about. So she does the paintings and then she, she keeps changing the paintings as she's going along? She just yeah, fo re-photographs them and yeah, makes she, them appear to move? Okay. She makes the mouth, mouth talk. So she, so she has to scrape them off and yeah. every time she wants to change the figure she has to scrape things off a little bit? She, she wanted her, her paintings to move and speak. She wanted sound as well as to paint. Okay. And this is by Jason Stopa. Jason Stopa. Now this piece strikes me as maybe one of the more abstract pieces in there. And I was talking yeah. to some people, they thought this looked kind of like a, a basketball court. He calls an aerial it a view. Court. Yeah. So I think it implies uh, a place where people go yeah. to play a game. And that's about, what, 32 by 32 square, something like that? Yes. And Jason likes to get down and sort of goob on some yeah. paint. I've seen some of his other work that I find is pretty, uh, pretty intriguing. It's an elegant piece, isn't it? I, I like it. Is that fluorescent paint? Yeah. I think that is fluorescent, right? Okay, let's wrap up on this piece. This is by Danny Leichel. Danny Leichel. Yes, and it's called History yeah. Lesson. And I think he took this idea from his uh, elementary school and a parochial school. Uh, maybe some bad memories. Yeah. Sitting with the teacher. Well, 
actually, maybe there's no teacher in this. But I so is this is this uh, oil acrylic? Uh, yeah. I think it's acrylic. With some charcoal in there, I can see. I, I there were a number of viewers really related to the body language of these students yeah. slumping off. Oh, I like his drawing with the the blue paint there. It's very nice. I think he's been very influenced by yeah. comic books, which he loved. And so he was one of those artists who started out. They were corrupted as youths and yeah. <laughs> have been going downhill ever since. Okay. Well, yeah. that was a quick run through of the triumph of human painting, curated by Kathy Bradford. Thanks so much. Here at Bull and Ram. 1717 Troutman Street, and the show is up until when? It's up until March 10th, Sunday, March 10th. March 10th, okay. Well, thank you, Kathy. And as always, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Yuri. Not Yuri, Jorgen. What is it? Jorgen. Jorgen. Not Russian. <laughs> All right, Jorgen. Thank you.